Hi, I'm Jeff Cogswell, and today I'm going to talk about a new feature in C++ called the Lambda functions. Lambda functions are part of the C++ standard that came out in 2011. And the, the general idea with Lambda functions is you can create a function and store it in a variable. Now, you could do that before with older versions of C++, but it was a little difficult to do because you had to manage pointers and pass them around and, and had some very strange syntax. With Lambda functions, it's much easier. Take a look at this part of the code that I'm highlighting. That part looks like a, a run-of-the-mill function. It takes a parameter called x and it prints out the value. But what I'm doing here is I'm actually saving this function inside a variable called myFunk. It's not running the function yet, it's, it's just creating it and saving it. Now let's go ahead and call the function. We just do myFunk and pass a parameter, 10, and then we can call it again, pass a parameter, 15. Let's save this and compile it. Come to the console and type G++, and we have to tell the compiler that we're using the C++11 standard. So we type minus STD, which stands for standard, equals C++11, and our file name. Now we compiled it. Let's go ahead and run it. And it printed out 10 and 15. With the first call of the function, we pass 10. It printed out 10. Second call, it, we pass 15, and it printed out 15. Now let's look a little more closely at this. The keyword auto used to have a different meaning in older versions of C++. In C++11, it basically means that the compiler will figure out what the type is so you don't have to actually specify the type. A function variable like this does have a type, but we, we can just use auto. This over here, these two brackets, are for, for the function to be able to interact with the variables inside the containing function. For example, if we type int y equal 5, and we want to be able to use that variable inside this Lambda function, we put ampersand y. Now we can go ahead and use it. We can say y equal x. Now let's come down here and print out the value of y after we called the function, and we'll do it again here. Now come back and compile it, and run it. And we can see the first time we called it, we printed out 10. Then we printed out the value of y, which is now 10. And same deal the second time around. y became 15. Now we might want to use variables but not be able to change them inside the function. To do that, we take off the ampersand. And in C++, the ampersand normally means a reference, and that's what we're dealing with here. So we take that off, and now we have a value instead of a reference. If we try to compile it right now, we're going to see an error. Um, error, assignment of read-only variable y. We can't actually change the value, but we can use it in here. So let's y, y equal, now we'll compile it, and run it, y equal 5, y equal 5, it still is, but before we call the function, let's set y equal 6, let's take out these two lines, and run it compile it, and run it. Now notice inside our function, when we're printing out the value of y, it still says 5, even though we changed it to 6 here. That's because when the compiler creates the function, it uses whatever value y is at that moment. So up here, y is 5, and then the compiler creates the function, then we change it to 6, but at that time, y was still 5. So that's why when we run it, y is still 5. So you have to be careful there, because that could actually create some bugs if you're expecting y to change. So to recap, we've got a function here, and we specify the parameters, and inside the brackets, we can tell which variables we want to interact with. Uh, use an ampersand for, for reference. We're saving that function in a variable, and the variable's type is auto, which means the compiler will, will decide what type to use.
And that's a very brief introduction to Lambda functions. As we'll see in the next video, uh, Lambda functions have a very important place in threading building blocks.